What's up y'all, Matcha Models, and welcome to build vlog number 20. In this episode, we're gonna be looking at four things. Photo etch resin lights, PE tow hooks, smoke canisters, and adding armor plates, all super cool stuff. All right, now let's jump into the build and see what's what. All right, so the next section I wanted to talk to was um, how the lights turned out and specifically these um, resin pour lights that I picked up. And uh, you know what you'll notice on the model is that you actually have two uh, different lights on here and, and that was intentional. Um, so some kind of quick findings up front. This looks like it's an older resin. So I'm just, I'm purely uh, going by what I see here. This is poured in Italy. I can't find a date. I'm sure it's on there and it's glaring me in the face, but I can't find it. But long story short, this is extremely brittle. Um, when I started to take like a 400 or 600 grit sanding to it, it immediately started pulling pieces off. So that was something I had, I had not encountered before and it made things kind of tricky. And I'll pause here and, and I'll push in to be able to show you um, a little bit more of what I mean here. When I started to kind of sand this, the, the light immediately started peeling uh, away. The material quickly, quickly came off. So um, I, I kind of felt like this this one was good, but the one on the right was a lost cause. So I switched and I used a, uh, a different um, resin light from that just to give it a little bit of like visual asymmetry. And, and I like how it turned out. And spinning this around, let's see if we can show it on camera. All I did was I simply pinned this. Um, you can kind of see the pin on the inside of here. I measured out where it was gonna go and then I ended up using um, the poly cap on the back side to attach the pin into. Okay, cool, so you can kind of see that. So the pin drops into the poly cap and it is adjustable and if I want to spin it, it works out really well. The only, however, as I mentioned, was that the, um, the piece itself kind of quickly fell apart. Um, the other thing too about pinning, and this is another kind of rookie mistake on my part, was when I decided to drill into it, I, I used my, my jewelry clamp holder, everything was groovy, it was going well. Um, I used my pin vise to drop into it, but I had the drill position too close to the front surface. So I dropped in you know, approximately here when I should have dropped into here. And the reason, and you can see the cleanup putty on this side was when you do it closer to the surface, you create an opportunity for the drill to breach, you know, just like if anybody's ever done woodworking, right? You wanna give the drill ample space to be able to work into, because if you set your tolerances really tight, you're probably gonna screw up. And on this one, I actually shacked it. I, I had a really good drill. However, again, when it kind of came to sanding, I just peeled away way too much material. All right, y'all, it's the next morning and the putty has set and we are um, back with our GM build. So you can see that uh, where the Tamiya gray putty has set against the hooks and it looks pretty good. Um, this one looks a tiny bit janky underneath the direct light, but I am going to weather this and I am going to uh, hit this with a Mr. Surfacer. So a lot of the kind of smaller gaps and um, and pits will should be filled. Uh, the other piece too is there's gonna be the vent cover on here. And um, I think I mentioned a moment ago, I'm gonna be doing weathering. So I'm not super concerned with, you know, this thing looking show accurate, um, but it looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, you can see there's like a little chip there, but that's chill and I'm still not sure how these things are gonna turn out once I hit them with a the primer. But I'm gonna pause and I'm actually gonna show you guys a little tool that I um, came up with here in a moment on how I can sand in here. Okay, so I pulled back just a tick so I can kind of show you on camera that I made these little guys. So um, in short, all I did was uh, take some toothpicks and cut some little tiny squares of sandpaper and use some Instaset super glue and baking soda. And I just tacked these on. These actually worked remarkably well. So when I uh, when I sat down this morning, I picked up my uh, my traditional flat standing sticks. I use these Madworks one, by the way, I love them. And I tried to get in there and I was like, okay, this is incompatible. So then I kind of just took a, a breath and started to think, well, you know, how the heck can I do this given what I've got? And I keep a, a little bag of sandpaper over here. By and large, I mostly use the Mad Work stuff. And then I also have the Infinity Sanding Sticks. But once in a blue moon, I'll pull the paper out to get into kind of weird edges and or use files. Um, but certainly for finishing bigger surfaces like this, I want to use sandpaper. Um, so yeah, I, I cut these out and uh, just went in there. One thing that I found was um, I didn't want to necessarily come flat into this. I had to kind of come at it at an angle, but it worked great. And I did um, four grits. So I did, I think, 220, 400, 800, and 1500. And I think this thing looks great. And again, I'm going to be doing some weathering, so I'm not too, too concerned with it. 
So kind of an overview, these are going to be for the uh, non-Gundam. These are the US ones that are going to go on the GMs. So I wanted to differentiate. You're going to see when I eventually get around the EZ-8, the smoke canister arrangement is going to be different. On uh, US models during Vietnam, this is kind of like how the cluster was arranged. And then on um, foreign and allied ones, they would arrange the uh, smoke canisters in a line. So I wanted to kind of evoke some of those cues. So to accomplish this, um, I did a couple things and I'll go ahead and uh, pull back after I give you a little tour of what this looks like. So I went with 2.5 millimeter because it matches the gun barrels on the GMs. Let's see if I can grab one here real quick. Yeah, there she is. Everybody knows and loves this machine gun that comes with um, the series. So the tip of that matches 2.5 and, and I thought to keep things in scale, that would kind of look similar. Where I wish I had done something different was if I had uh, a smaller piece of plastic struck rod, maybe one millimeter, what I would have done is, and, and I'll give you a breakdown, you can see on the back side of this, the smoke canisters are actually two parts. So it's a piece of 2.5 cut at an angle and then it's another piece that goes down. And all I simply did was uh, utilizing my Plastimagic and a little clamp, I was able to put the pieces together, let them kind of hang out, maybe put a dab of extra glue and then get them in here. And then the nice part is, since they're kind of circular, you saw that one move. I think this is actually my, my weakest one, it's a little loose. Um, it gives me a little chance to kind of adjust them and, and get them to look in the, like cool smoke canister formation. I put a piece of rod down in here and I'd use maybe, if I couldn't get my fingers in for some angles, I'd use some blue tack to kind of help me cement it along with these how you doings. I cut them at different angles. You can see too, I, I put this little pit area right here so I could kind of keep them organized. Um, and I did a lot of my trimming with my gun, uh, Gundam nippers. So I only used the saw for the initial cut to make sure I had the angle. After that, I would use uh, 220 and then a 400 grit to kind of get everything nice and flat and smooth. Um, but this is the fastest, kind of easiest way for me to get after. The, the cuts weren't the most clean, but I'm okay with it. What's up, y'all? Working on some plot plate. So I wanted to do a little video on this because um, I've never really worked with plot plate extensively, and this is my quote-unquote first time. And I'm having a blast. This is actually a lot of fun once you kind of think things through and, and figure out what your process and your flow is. So uh, for the GM, just some kind of like base things. I'm using uh, 0.25 millimeter plot plate. I wanted to add a little bit of bulk, but I didn't want to over bulk it. So it kind of looks like this. And hopefully in the next video, you guys will get to see what the product looks like. So effectively, it's just going to add like a tiny, you know, little bit of bulk. And it's going to show that, hey, there's a, a little bit of extra armor here on the shoulder because of X, Y, and Z. Um, so the way that I went about this was, you can see I have my little template right here, and for the shoulder and the skirt section, all I did was um, I laid this down, and then I used a mechanical pencil, and I traced around it, and then using my hobby knife and a small set of tweezers, I pulled this off, and then I put it on the plot plate. And then using the chopper, which is like pretty straightforward, I uh, went ahead and cut out the template. The kind of keen thing I'll show you here in a second that saved me a lot of time that took me a little bit to figure out is that I ended up using the template as the template on the plot plate. And let's take a look. All right, we're up close and personal with the chopper, but what you can see is that I've taken my skirt template and I actually put a little bit of blue tack on the other side of it. And I started using this to cut the pieces versus tracing it with a pencil and then going at it again for one huge reason. So if you lower the blade and hopefully this shows up on camera and you get it low enough and you just simply slide the piece up to the razor blade itself, you'll get the perfect exact cut and you'll save yourself a bunch of steps from getting after it. Now the trick is when you get the blade low enough, you have to make sure it's clear of the part because you don't want to um, mess up your master mold, especially with the shoulder pieces. I had to make eight of those. So you just have to be really careful that when you slide this up to it, that it doesn't go below it. But I really like this method. It worked out really, really well. And I'll show you kind of part three of how I formed all the pieces. So once the piece came out, I um, then lined it back up with the original part it was intended for. And at times I'd find maybe one of these angles was off. It was relatively straightforward to fix. So I would take my piece of plot plate. I kind of visually just take a look at it. It's not super exact for me. And then I'd use my 220 uh, grit sanding stick and I'd sand off where I wanted to take a little bit of material. So I'd start this way to go ahead and remove the material. And then I would finish this way so that everything has a nice, even uh, looking clean area. And then I would just come back with a little bit of 400 to round it off and, and take everything out. 
So that's it for this little tutorial I have. You can see over here my shoulder pieces, my skirt pieces. I'm gonna do the back side of the armor here, and this is gonna be my last move. After this, I'm actually gonna uh, start shaping milliput, and I wanna put it in as a uh, seam weld for all of these pieces on there. I know it's kind of out of scale, but I'm envisioning a world where perhaps like a Gundam would weld another Gundam versus a person. Um, so if a person welded these giant plates on, the welds would be, you know, not visible. But in theory, if a Gundam put it on there, you would see the nice big thick dimes um, that you would normally see with welds. But I'll do another video after the uh, that comes together, and then with any luck, I'll start painting sometime later this week. All right, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Just some closing thoughts for you right here. And this next video, we're going to take a look at adding some weld beads to the armor panels and some other cool stuff. Just a reminder, we are reaching back into the past. So if you want to see the completed version of this build, head over to my Facebook or my Instagram where you can see completed pictures and how the whole project came together. As always, I hope whatever you're building, whatever you're doing, whatever dog you're walking, whatever breakfast you're making, whatever, heck, whatever lunch you're eating, you're out there and you're making it, Manjo. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.